The Niagara River has left a number of plunge holes along its 12-mile course to Lake Ontario. Perhaps one day, after the next ice sheet relegates the river and the Great Lakes to geological history, the landscape here at Niagara's famous Devil's Hole will resemble that of modern-day Round Lake. Green Lake and Round Lake are unusual in many ways. For one, there's the blue-green color visible at the surface. Unlike most lakes and ponds, these do not turn over. Water at the top, containing high levels of oxygen, never mixes with water at the bottom that is completely devoid of oxygen. In fact, the water at the bottom of both lakes has not changed for thousands of years. Most lakes and ponds turn over on a regular basis, pushed along by winds. Water at the surface is forced to the bottom in a cycle that brings water at the bottom to the top again and again. In that way, the entire body of water is oxygenated. But most lakes and ponds are relatively shallow and wide. Not so, the Green Lakes or Glacier Lake. Without oxygen, nothing can live below a certain level, and nothing does in Round Lake, Green Lake, or Glacier Lake. With no organisms to decompose it, core samples from the bottom have produced organic material unchanged from the time it floated down from above hundreds of years ago. There's a layer separating the dead zone below from oxygenated water above, and in this intermediate layer, extremely rare organisms occur. Above it, these lakes contain enough oxygen to sustain certain freshwater fish and plants. Green Lake and Round Lake are protected from winds by a rim of ancient white cedars surrounded by some of the oldest remaining virgin forest land in North America. Among the trees here are specimens that have been determined by scientists to be among the oldest in eastern North America. Upland forests across the region were clear-cut during the 19th century by European settlers to make way for agriculture, fuel steam railroads, and supply growing industry. The forest around the Green Lakes has never been harvested. Many of these tall hardwoods were already growing here when the American Revolutionary War began. Ecologists have learned that undisturbed old growth trees grow very slowly. Canadian botanists recently discovered that some white cedars growing on cliff surfaces along the Niagara Escarpment in the province of Ontario have been alive for almost 1,000 years. Might the same be true of some of the cedars growing here at Glacier Lake? And beneath this tree, what appear to be remnants of layers of limestone that have mostly eroded away from surrounding landscape. Might these be remains of the ancient escarpment over which the Green Lakes waterfalls plunged into bedrock basins below? <laughs> 